welcome back to the Oracle Mobile Application Framework YouTube channel. In this episode, we will explore the Math Local database together. You will learn what it can do and what are its limitations. You will also see how to properly maintain your database file. The Math Local database is feature rich and a worthwhile addition to the framework. But before I can explain what it can do, I think it is important to ask ourselves why we need it. Obviously, a local database is useful if you want your application to have offline capabilities. But there is more, much more to it. Firstly, the Math Local database enables you to implement high availability in your application. Working in offline mode is just one of the possible use cases. Even if you require an active network connection to complete a transaction, a local database makes fluctuations in network connectivity transparent to the end user. You can use the local database as a buffer and transmit to the server once the network is back. Yes, you could simply hold data in memory instead, but what if the application crashes in the meantime? Thus, a local database protects the integrity of the data. Secondly, the local database is particularly useful if you need to guarantee that transactions are sent once and only once to the server. You can see it as a two-phase commit without the usual complexity, since transactions are committed locally before being processed server-side. Finally, 3G and LTE bandwidth is expensive. The local database can make your application use it more efficiently. How so? By sending essential records while on, on a cellular network and uploading photographs and other large files only when connected to Wi-Fi, for example, or simply by caching the results of web service calls locally. In math, access to the local database is done through the JDBC API. JDBC is part of the Java virtual machine used to execute business logic in math applications. In addition, there is no need to deploy the appropriate JDBC driver since math provides it. The math local database is based on the SQLite open source database. SQLite is probably the most widely used database engine on the planet since it is embedded in several popular desktop applications such as the Firefox web browser. A SQLite database is always contained in a single file, but, as we will see, provides several advantages over traditional file-based storage. SQLite is certainly lightweight, but not light on features. Oracle selected it for integration in Math for several reasons. Firstly, it is ACID compliant. What does that mean? A stands for atomicity. Basically, transactions are all or nothing, which preserves data integrity. C stands for consistency. Transactions bring the database from one valid state to another. I stands for isolation. Concurrent execution of transaction results in a system state that would be obtained if transactions were executed one after the other. D stands for durability. Once a transaction has been committed, it will remain so even in the event of power loss, crashes or errors. Those four characteristics made SQLite a good choice for mobile deployment. Secondly, SQLite implements nearly all of the SQL 92 standard. This means you will be able to leverage your current SQL skills. I will discuss what is missing shortly, but don't worry. You will probably not miss the missing features. Thirdly, SQLite is self-contained. This was essential for us since we needed to keep the size of the math runtime low. The SQLite codebase is small and doesn't require any dependencies. Finally, SQLite does not require any configuration to work. Just do your JDBC calls right away. However, this doesn't mean that SQLite is not configurable, rather than the default settings are sensible. You can tune the behavior of the database engine through several options. SQLite is reliable and powerful. On the other hand, it has some limitations. Let's have a look at them. The first limitation found in SQLite is about concurrency. 
SQL-like databases can have multiple connections open at any time, whether they are made from different threads or not. However, a single connection can write to the database at any given time. Normally, this would force you to write complex exception handling code in order to recover from write failures. However, Oracle did the heavy lifting for you. In math applications, if a connection tries to write but does not own the write lock, it will simply wait for it without raising an exception. This could have a noticeable impact on performance in write-intensive scenarios, but greatly simplifies your code. A second SQLite limitation is that it enables you to declare types for database columns, but will not enforce data type constraints. SQLite relies on dynamic typing instead. The type of a value is associated with the value itself, not with its container. However, if you try, for example, to insert a string in an integer column, SQLite will try to convert the string to an integer. If the conversion fails, it will then store the original string. Thirdly, SQLite has been designed to fit the requirements of resource-constrained environments. This means it doesn't offer all the features found in enterprise-class databases such as Oracle. In particular, SQLite does not support stored procedures. In addition, it does not offer niceties such as native storage for XML or JSON. Finally, while SQLite offers enterprise-grade encryption, the granularity of its security features is rather coarse. It's not possible to password protect a database without encrypting it. Moreover, the database does not implement the grant and revoke commands commonly found in enterprise-class database engines because they would be meaningless for an embedded database engine. As you can see, SQLite is perfectly adapted to use in mobile applications. To use it in a math application, the first step is to decide how you will create the database file. There are two options for this. The first one is to use DML, commands such as create table, to create the database. To do so, you will need to implement a listener that will execute the DML when the application is started. Although it is possible to hardcode the DML, my recommendation is to store it in a file and then parse the file at runtime. I will show you how in another episode. The second option is to use a preceded database. In that case, you will use a variety of tools to create the tables and populate them with data. You then package the database file inside your application. This brings us to the big question. Which technique should I use? The answer is fairly simple. Create the database dynamically unless you need to deploy a large quantity of data. In that case, a preceded database will save lots of bandwidth and will make your application available right away after installation. To build a preceded database, you can use the common line channel provided by the SQLite team itself. It is very compact and can be integrated in scripts, which facilitates automation. You can download it from the SQLite site. If you feel you need a graphical user interface, there are several third-party tools available on the market for Windows, Linux, and OS X. A comprehensive list is available on SQLite.org. Most default settings for SQLite databases make sense. However, the design of iOS and Android combined to SQLite's own architecture require that you change at least one. I will now describe the problem and explain how to deal with it. A SQLite database is always contained in a single file. This file is organized in pages of a fixed size, each page containing records. The file grows as records are added. This leads to more pages. At some point, some of the pages will be empty because all the records they contain would have been deleted. When that happens, the free pages are added to a list. When the database needs to insert new records, it will reuse one of the pages in the list. The downside of this approach 
is that the database file can grow but never shrinks even when most of the records have been deleted. In most cases, this will not be a problem. I would certainly not recommend to store billions of records on a mobile device anyway, even though that's technically possible. However, there is a painless and automated way to shrink the database file. This is SQLite's auto vacuum feature. Let's see how it works. With auto vacuum enabled, SQLite still stores pointers to free pages in a list. The database engine adds special metadata to each table for tracing purposes. SQLite will move all the free pages at the end of the file and then truncate the file. The unused storage has been freed. To enable auto vacuum, you must execute the pragma auto underscore vacuum command before creating any table in the database. The feature cannot be turned off afterwards. Over time, auto vacuum will result in database fragmentation. This is because SQLite will move pages around the file frequently. Thus, records initially inserted in a sequential fashion and stored in contiguous pages will probably be dispersed which will have a noticeable performance impact. SQLite cannot defragment a database. If fragmentation becomes a problem, your only option will be to create a new database file and move the data to it. That's it for now. SQLite is a powerful database, well suited to the requirements of mobile applications. Its limitations are few and its reliability is high. I'm Frédéric Desbiens. Thank you for watching and see you soon.